Casey Suchan and Tim Colley for April 17th, 2021. You're listening to The Jam Price Show, and today my guests are co-directors Casey Suhan and Tim Colley, and we're going to be talking about their brand new documentary, Make Shift. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. for having us. Did I say your names right? Yes. Good. Nailed it. Absolutely. Good. <laughs> good, good, good. All right. I thought this movie, this documentary was very fascinating, and I was uh, really interested in seeing it because I spent uh, a good portion of my career in advertising and marketing. So, and so obviously I was very interested in this. I left it a long, long time ago, but I actually worked uh, at Novell with Eric Schmidt who is in a short segment in your film. I was a senior manager of communications for Novell back in the 90s, late 90s. So, um, yeah, I thought this was a very interesting film. How did this come about? How did this project come about? And how did, well, we'll start with that. How did this project come about? And and also, well, let's start with that question. Well, Tim. Casey and I Casey. are a little bit of the odd couple on this in that I am a life my whole career has been spent in advertising, and she is a full-time filmmaker. I had made a couple films, but Casey's the full-time um, director filmmaker of the duo. I came at it from, I have a client called WP Engine, and they provide, um, the simple word would be hosting services, but the, the, the true expanse, they provide a digital experience platform where digital creatives can make any kind of experience they want on the web from a shopping experience to, um, you know, you can interact with a brand, whatever you want to do online, online as a company, WP engine lets you do it. They are my client and they came to us that we feel a change that it's not enough to just do ads that say, show your logo and have a quick message. Can we do something of real value to the digital community? We have this thought, of maybe doing a film, like do a piece of entertainment that serves as a love letter to the digital creatives who reinvented advertising. And a movie is not a movie without a little conflict. So I was like, maybe, maybe that, that could be, you know, the change that I lived from traditional TV based Mad Men style advertising to modern advertising that can be anything. And they said, we'd like to pursue that kind of project with you. And I had made a couple films. Uh, so they thought, okay, Tim, normally you wouldn't come to an ad agency with that, but Tim might be able to pull it off. And I said, I think I can, but I need some help. And I knew the folks at September club, which is a production company uh, based in, I knew them from the Milwaukee days. Now they have their outpost in California. And I knew Barry, yeah, who's the producer on the film and boom, Barry brought in Casey, we clicked, and she's got the outsider perspective, I've got the insider perspective, and that was the genesis of the project. Absolutely wonderful. So Casey, how about you? I mean, he just sort of told us how you got involved, but why did you decide? um, Initially talking to Tim and the team at WP Engine, I knew it was going to be a great team to work with and that they had a vision um, for the, for what they wanted to do with making a feature film and being able to make, we made a couple shorts out of the content that we shot. We filmed one interviews for this. So we had a ton of content and their vision was super interesting. And then just the idea of being able to document that moment in this particular um, business, you know, this really uh, kind of revolutionary moment of the internet and how, and, how companies and creatives um, either uh, use that technology to grow, you know, or how some of them kind of couldn't, didn't know what to do with these new tools. It it was, we talked a lot about the film Art and Copy, which um, talks about what happened in the moment when the art director and the copywriter started working together back in those Mad Men days and um, how that changed the advertising team. And now with the internet, that team changed again. Um, And so that was, it was just an interesting inflection moment and um, something I was delighted to uh, become a part of. Telling the story. Go ahead, go ahead, Tim. 
Did you have something else to add? No, that's, no, that's, that's, that's the truth. That's the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Okay, I swear to God. <laughs> I'm an ad guy, but I'm not going to just embellish to embellish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, as, as Tim said, like, I've done a lot of these movies. I've been lucky to do a lot of movies about um, subjects that I'm not an expert in. And I, I love that I do, they, the idea. you know, who lived that experience, people in the advertising business or adjacent to it in some way, um, but also that reaches out to a general audience you know, and make it meaningful to them as well. Yes. So we didn't. And Casey, uh, when you say that, which is something we never talk about, um, when you say adjacent to it, like who isn't adjacent to advertising? Right. You know, like <laughs> you, you could put, you know, my 80 year old parents in front of a television and they will critique every ad and tell you why that's hilarious and that's stupid. And this makes sense. And how did this end up on TV? Advertising is pop culture. So, Jan, I, I thought it was interesting that you reacted saying, oh, I used to be in advertising, so this appealed to me. But I was curious, as somebody who is seeing all this for the first time, did it feel inside baseball to you? Like, it's just for those folks? Or do you think, like, is Burger King enough pop culture that it could bleed over into anybody facing a creative or business problem? I think... I, I really loved the history of advertising and whether I was a, I, I thought of a number of people that I know who've been in the advertising world and um, who and, and have taught, you know, have taught marketing and advertising uh, at the college level and the graduate level. And I thought, oh boy, they would really enjoy this movie. Um, but I think any, because it is such a, you know, we are inundated constantly with ads. And uh, I think it would be, it's fascinating for anybody. I, I loved how you, uh, the history, you know, how, how, you know, they would start with, you know, brand new, um, you know, something, a, a new, uh, what's the word I want to use? that they were technology. using technology yeah, yeah technology and as soon as they were you know everybody kind of uh, conquered that and got it and understood it it changed or disappeared or so, and you're moved on to something else so it shows how quickly <laughs> everyone needs to be nowadays even more so i mean back in the day i loved how you inter interspersed uh, madman which i love madman and um you know in in it and you know how it was back in the day i mean my father was in advertising and marketing so uh, so you know again it comes from a family of that so he and he was the madman era era of things you know with the martinis and all of those things but uh so it it, it how the evolution is because i don't think anybody's going out today and having those three uh martini lunches like they used to it's like everybody's hunkered down no. you know <laughs> doing what they're no. supposed to be doing but even now uh, what's interesting and i wanted because you have the now um in in the film um when did you film it? When did you stop filming it? Did you film it at all during the pandemic, or was it filmed before that? Before the pandemic, oh. yep. Yeah, I mean, when I think back to it, Casey's almost just like, uh, I sort of like have this these romantic notions of like, oh my God, we were getting on airplanes and walking around, <laughs> you know, all these cities and meeting new people and shaking people's hands. It's really like the last thing we did. So, you know, we flew around for, what, a year? Yeah, you know, about a year. Mm -hmm. 15 different trips where Casey's West Coast, I'm in Boston. We would, you know, go to a city for two, three days, meet everybody we could while we were there, go back, cut a little bit, you know, Matt would pull clips, whatever, and then on to the next, build out the story. But the very last thing we did, Jan, before the pandemic, the the literally like the last time I've been in a crowded room was February a year and two months ago wow. when we did like an insider screening for the New York participants of the almost final cut. Amazing. And then it just locked down. And then we kind of finished it during that time, not knowing well, you know, do we want to take advantage while everybody, you know, was locked down in tiger King mode do we have a captive audience? But I think the client was sensitive to people have sort of bigger fish to fry right now. Like let's, and also advertising really has gone through 
like so many businesses, a rough time uh, the last year. But I think what we were hoping in releasing it now is maybe there the clouds are parting a little bit, and the same way this film kind of talked about a existential crisis, like TV is isn't we built this whole industry on TV, and TV's kind of like fading. And now this next existential crisis is how do you work in these large teams for a whole year during COVID? You know, so, uh, you know, I think it's about solving problems and saying, how does technology figure into that? How does optimism and creativity figure into that? Whatever that curveball may be. Well, that's what I yeah. was... There's a quote in the film. I, one of my favorite quotes in the film is when um, one of our interviews said, you know, back in the day, yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And the, and it's true. Like, things change really quickly now. And, and we've seen that in the last year in spades, you know? So um, it's, it, it feels in some ways a, a good opportunity to look back and see see how creative kind of dealt with um, things that were being thrown at them quickly, you know, um, a good time to look back at that for inspiration too. Well, definitely. Cause I, you know, so many things obviously did change during the pandemic for everybody and every business. And I think we've all learned how to work remotely and, um, and, and do things differently. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if people are uh, really wanting to go back to an office space again. You know, I know some people miss the camaraderie of all of that, but some, uh, who would just read somebody, they're not going to go back to campus. Some, you know, some big company, they've just learned how to work remote. And kind of like that. I mean, I see a lot of these huge, I live near Silicon Valley, so I can see some of these large campuses, you know, closing down um, because people aren't going to go to them anymore. I see a lot of real estate out there um, of these big businesses that have been out there in the past. So it's, yeah, it's changing. I, you know, for me, and it's, it's terrible to say, but, um, and, and this is, you kind of touch on this a little bit, but you know, we have all of these, you know, streaming services with no commercials. And I think some, um, offer the option to have commercials and it's cheaper or the option to pay more and not have commercials. And I'm one of those people who doesn't want to see any of the commercials. You know, I don't want to be interrupted, <laughs> you know, at all. And, yeah. uh, you know, I sometimes we, I, I record a lot of shows. but And some of them, you know, have this thing where you, when you press the button, it just is, it's a smart resume. It will just resume after the commercials. Um, but not all the shows do oh, that. Yeah. And I don't know why some do and some don't. But I love that feature. <laughs> So it's interesting having been in advertising, but again, you do it, but then sometimes I'll be fast forwarding and I'll see something that looks interesting. So I'll stop because I do want to see what that commercial is all about, you know, cause there are some fun ones out there. So did you, um, I mean, it's, it's like, you're right. Everybody has to change on a dime nowadays. And it, I don't believe it was that same way when, you know, back in the day, you know, let's go back in the, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, even 80s. Um, you know, I mean, it started to change in the 80s. I love, you know, I loved how you did, you know, the history of every everything in each, you know, each decade and how it changed. Did, was, mm-hmm. am I, is that, am I, is that a true uh, fact that it didn't have to change as quickly and it's changing much more dramatically? nowadays well uh, technology definitely throws um, has thrown everything into chaos and you either go I mean I was totally leading the witness with that question but we asked everybody was did we miss the golden age or is now the golden age mm. and there's a quote in the trailer that says well you start each assign- it used to be here's the TV here's the radio here's the print and that's all you had to be good at three things. And there's a quote in the trailer from the guys at 72 and Sunny saying, well, we start each assignment with, well, what do we think it should be? And the answer is anything. You know, Don Draper was never like the client was never like, hey, let's make an 80 minute movie. Right. Feature film. Let's let's make a, a a strange, unbranded post that tricks people into thinking this that causes a viral stir and then three days later we release that it was from a brand like it's entertainment it has to intrigue people not we you're not captive we can't pin you down and say our detergent 
has 10 more, 10 percent more stain fighting agents. Like people don't care. Right. If they want to figure it out, they'll figure it out. So we have to entertain and entice, not bludgeon. Yeah. And I think what's exciting about that is that, you know, brands and the creatives that are helping the brands um, have presence in consumers' lives have to be respectful of the consumer in a way that they never had to be before. They have to think about ways that they can enhance somebody's life with their with content rather than just annoy them and interrupt them. So I think it's a, and I, I, in talking to creatives, there's a lot of people who are thinking about what they can do with those, with experiences to tell their brand stories and raise brand awareness, but also create an experience for consumers that is either like Tim said, and mean, um, entertaining, um, but also like something that's meaningful in their lives. So it's a great opportunity and super exciting because there's a lot of touch points that um, we can be reached at. Well, one of the things that I think um, nowadays, it seems like even more now than ever, that, and I know for me this is true, I want to buy products from people who are giving back. And you, when you, yeah. you, you read the label, mm-hmm. when you go 10% of our profits go to feeding the hungry or whatever it may be, mm-hmm. um, helping people. I buy a particular, um, you know, uh, body lotion because they're helping women in Africa, you know, which is near and dear to my heart. So, um, you know, those things, when I see uh, that a product is being socially conscious, that their products are recyclable and that they're, you know, obviously non-GMO and organic and all those other things that they can be too. But that they're also giving back to the community, some you know, where, whatever community it is, but to the world at large. And I think that's really becoming more and more important for people. And I think that's a, a story that more companies should be talking about about their what their you know the, their um, philanthropic you know uh, what they're doing that w- in and giving away so that that's another thought but I also there's a number of things that go into but also um, I loved the domino story because you're right nowadays before mm-hmm. we go buy anything um, you know I I go online and see what reviews products have and I've decided not to buy things because the reviews haven't been all that great or they've been really mixed or I've bought things because people have you know more of the everybody's raving and it's been you know five stars you know so I think we're just we're more savvy consumers than we were perhaps before too but I love the story about Domino's Pizza you, uh, can uh, Casey why don't you tell us that story oh sure you know Domino's um, this was a campaign through Christopher Porter Bogutsky um, and Domino's came to them and said you know we need your help um, in, in telling our story. And the story was, or changing perception, right? Because the perception was everybody was complaining about how bad their pizza was. It, 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 the crust tasted like cardboard. The cheese was disgusting and waxy, you know, just awful, horrible, <laughs> hilarious reviews. And what CPB pitched to them was, hey, like, own this. Be transparent. Like, say, yeah, we know our pizza was gross, but we're going to change the recipe because you asked us to do it. We've changed everything. Um, and, you know, Tim, if you want to tell more about what that campaign looked like, but that was like the genesis of, of the campaign was listen to your customers, be transparent and do what they're asking. And it was wildly successful. Yeah. And that was, that was sort of, they were the first ones to, to not be afraid. That was unheard of in that right now a lot of you know clients even the most conservative client is used to if you put something online 30 percent of the people will accuse you of you know, being the antichrist and 40 percent in the middle won't care and 30 percent will love you but like that was always like clients would freak out and pull something if there was like one negative comment i had a television like a six hundred thousand dollar television campaign pulled because one ro- woman wrote a letter once this was like in the 90s wow and clients just couldn't handle it somebody in the ad dropped a purse and some stuff spilled out and they they we got a note from a woman saying we were perpetuating the myth of purse junk 
and they pulled the campaign. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> so because they could, they were like, "We're get, we're upsetting people. We gotta. This is wrong." But now clients are like, "Oh yeah, you know, Twitter went crazy, but it wasn't that bad." But when Domino's did this, to accept and say, "Hey, we've heard the criticism. Here's what the criticism is," and it's it's kind of true, and we're going to do better. That was insane at the time. It was. And it was. The, the transparency wasn't a world, word back then. Back then, it was like, have a Coke and a smile and shut up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, transparency, you know, is the word of the of this maybe of this little decade. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's real important. And you're right. You can't, you know, um, average. Companies cannot respond to everything that's out there that's negative. But when you get uh, a, a lot of the same negative um, responses, then yes, you should be responding because you can't please everybody all the time. And there's going to be things that some people love and right. some people, you know, things that people don't love. And you know, and now we're into this cancel culture and everything else. So I think we, yeah. you know, we can go too far sometimes with some things. But I think if you obviously like they did for Domino's, it was like they, they kept getting the same thing over and over again. You know, so they did. When when, yeah. when did that happen? When did they do that campaign? When did they change that? Do you remember, Tim? I'm guessing that's like early, early aughts, like maybe 2003, something like that. Okay. Yeah, I think you do 2005, have 2005, somewhere in there. Okay. It was, that we used that campaign, you know, when we, there are so many great campaigns that have happened in this digital age since our story really starts to take flight with the internet that we did not have time to get into in this film. And it will always break my heart, the little things that are left on the cutting room floor. But what we tried to do was pick certain campaigns that kind of broke through the noise and figured out the technology of that particular moment really well and ran with it, you know, and, and kind of changed the game. And so Dom, the Domino story uh, falls in line with like Twitter happening, you know, and, people being able to talk back at a brand. That's kind of the moment, right? Where people were talking back at Domino's and Domino's, um, you know, through the help of CPB, chose to be to engage in that conversation, which is a really powerful, uh, you know, um, moment. I think when you're looking at the history of advertising and to say, well, what does that do? How does that change the way other brands are going to move forward now? Yeah, it, very fascinating. I, 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 that story is just very, very significant, obviously, and, and it did change the landscape there. How do you think, we only have a, a minute or two, how do you think um, the landscape is changing now, especially after COVID? Because you finished this film before COVID and lots of things changed during COVID. So in, in, in your perspective now, Tim, how do you see things changing as far as advertising? If you don't value the client's or customer's um, time, you're out. I, I think it's as simple as that because we have every tool to get around advertising, but we still want to buy products. Like you said, I figured out which body lotion supports the causes I care about. You took time to do, do that, figure out where that thing is sold, how to order it. People want to shop. People like buying stuff and get those messages out in a way that respects their intelligence and their time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think people, as I said, it makes you feel good, you know, when you buy something that you know um, that it's going to help support some other people. By my purchasing this, it's going to help someone else. And that makes you feel good. And that's kind of the meta thing of the film here is like we, we're, we're going to do ads and have marketing messages, but we want to don't just, we want to practice what we preach. So we're going to put out a piece of entertainment that will genuinely, um, will, will hope, you know, fascinate digital marketing people with no other agenda than we want to do right by you. That's great. That's great. What real quick? What what was a, one story that? Oh, we probably don't have too much more time. I, let's let's tell everybody where people can see Makeshift. Where is it playing that people can watch it? Well, it's on VOD platforms everywhere, so they can go to their Apple TV and talk to it. 
<laughs> tell them they want to see the movie <laughs> and find a way to download it. Um, but really, truly, like at any VOD platform, um, they can search and find the movie, watch the trailer, and hopefully like decide to dive in. It is. This is the first thing I've made, Dan, since my talking since I got one of those talking remotes. So I just pressed the button and said, "Makeshift Casey Suhan," and boom, it came right up. And that was uh, the technology is ever evolving because that was a first, and I've been doing this a long time. And don't you love it? <laughs> I, I just love it. I love talking to my remote. I love it. <laughs> And to record yeah. makeshift. <laughs> you know, where's makeshift? It is. It's, yeah, it's, everyone should do that. It's it's absolutely wonderful. Well, thank you. It's been such a pleasure having both of you on the show, Casey and Tim. Real, real pleasure. And I wish you much success with makeshift. And everybody, go look for it. It's fascinating. It really is. Since we've all advertising affects all of us. So thank you. Thanks for talking to you. You too, you too. You can listen to The Jam Price Show whenever and wherever at thejampriceshow.com and on the iHeart Podcast Network, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, anywhere where you listen to your favorite podcast. And you can also go to thejampriceshow.com where all the shows are archived and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at The Jam Price Show. Thank you for listening.